Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to find the slope of a line from two points. We will go through three examples together, and then you'll try three practice problems on your own. Now remember, slope measures the steepness of a line, so how much a line goes up or down as it moves from left to right. And slope equals rise over run, so the vertical change over the horizontal change. In previous videos, we found slope by counting units. So we just counted how far up or down and then how far over we went between points. Here, we're going to use the coordinates of the points to find slope. We use this formula right here. Slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. y2 minus y1 gives us our vertical change, and x2 minus x1 gives us our horizontal change. So this is still rise over run here. We're just using the coordinates of the two points to find the rise and run. Now you'll notice our points are at 3, 1 and 5, 8. We need to pick our first point and our second point. Now, does it matter which is which? No, we will get the same slope either way, which I will show later. I typically like working from left to right, so the left point to the right point. Since we are looking for the slope of the line, as it moves from left to right. So let's use 3, 1 as our first point, so x1 and y1, and then 5, 8 is going to be our second point, so x2 and y2. Let's label these now. So for 3, 1, 3 is our x coordinate, so let's label that as x1, and then 1 is our y coordinate, so let's label that y1. Now for 5, 8. 5 is going to be x2, and 8 is going to be y2. Now all we need to do is plug these in to our formula, and I'm going to rewrite our formula in order to help us get this down. So slope equals, and I'm using m4 slope here, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So plugging these in, we have slope equals, well, y2 is 8 minus y1 is 1. So we have 8 minus 1 there. And then x2 is 5 and x1 is 3. So we have 5 minus 3. 8 minus 1 gives us 7, and then 5 minus 3 gives us 2, and that's our slope, 7 over 2, 7 halves. 7 is our rise, and 2 is our run. That formula gave us the rise and the run, so the vertical change and the horizontal change. Now you may also hear the rise called the change in y, and the run called the change in y x. Now we did not need the line on the graph to find the slope here because we were just able to use the points, the coordinates. But I wanted to include it to give us a visual of the slope and show that counting units gives us the same slope. So taking a look at the line, let's work from left to right. So this point to this point and find the rise and the run. Let's start with the rise. So one unit, two units, three units, four units, five units, six units, seven units in order to align with the other point. So the rise is seven. And then as far as the run, we need to go over one unit, two units. So the run is two. So we get the same slope that way as well. So rise of seven, run of two. Now before moving on, I want to show real quick that switching the first and second point will still give us the same slope. And what I mean by that is using 
five eight as x one and y one, and then three one as x two and y two. So rewriting these, we have three one and five eight. So we're going to switch here. Three is going to be x two, and one is going to be y two. Five is going to be x one, and eight is going to be y1. So slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now let's plug in y2 is 1 minus y1 is 8 over x2 is 3 minus x1 is 5. 1 minus 8 gives us negative 7. And then 3 minus 5 gives us negative 2. So we get negative 7 over negative 2. And if we look at the graph and start at the right point, 5, 8, we go down 7 and to the left, 2. That gets us to the other point, 3, 1. So the rise is negative 7 and the run is negative 2 when we go from the right point to the left point, which we have a negative over a negative, negative in both the numerator and denominator. A negative over a negative, which is a negative divided by a negative, gives us a positive. So this can be written as a positive 7 over 2. And that makes sense. This should be positive. Think about it. We can see that this line has a positive slope. It's moving upward as it moves from left to right. So we can actually write this as a positive 7 over 2, a positive 7 halves. And you can see that we get the same slope. Again, a negative over a negative results in a positive, a positive slope. So we can't see that we get the same slope either way there. Something we can't do is mix and match. For example, let me come up here and find some room. So we'll say this is 3, 1, and then 5, 8. We can't make 3, x1, and then 1, y2, and then 5, x2, and then 8, y1. So we can't mix and match. That's not going to give us the correct slope. Let's move on to our next examples. Taking a look at numbers 2 and 3, we are given the coordinates of two points that a line passes through. We need to find the slope of each line using the given points. Let's jump into number 2 where we have negative 8, 6, and 0, 2. So slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's make negative 8 x1 and 6 y1. Then 0 x2 and 2 y2. Now we can plug in y2 is 2 minus y1 is 6 over x2 is 0 minus x1, which is negative 8. And I'm putting negative 8 in parentheses there just so it's clear we are working with a negative and it doesn't get lost next to the subtraction sign. Now let's subtract. 2 minus 6 gives us negative 4. And then we have 0 minus negative 8. Now, whenever we have subtraction problems involving integers and we have positives and negatives, it can be helpful to add the opposite. And this is one of those problems where this can be helpful. So we add the opposite. The opposite of negative 8 is positive 8. So we have 0 plus 8, which is 8. And that's our slope negative 4 over 8, negative 4 eighths. Now this fraction can be simplified, and when it comes to slope, 
we want to look to simplify if possible. The greatest common factor between negative four and eight is four. So let's divide both negative four and eight by four. Negative four divided by four gives us negative one and eight divided by four gives us two. So our final simplified slope is negative one half. Let's move on to number three, where we have negative seven, four and negative one, nine. So slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's make negative seven x1 and four y1 and then negative one x2 and nine y2. So let's plug those in. y2 is nine minus y1 is four over x2 is negative one minus x1 is negative seven. Now we can subtract. Nine minus four gives us five and then negative one minus negative seven. Let's add the opposite here. So add the opposite. Negative one plus seven gives us a positive six. So our slope here, five over six, five sixths, which this is in simplest form. So we are done. Now that we've gone through some examples together, time for you to try some practice problems on your own. Here are your practice problems. Find the slope of each line from the given points. I'll give you three minutes and then we will go over the answers. Go ahead and start.
Okay, so that was three minutes. Let's go over the answers. So here are the answers. For number one, the slope is three over one, which we have a denominator of one here, so we can also write this as three. So either of those will work. For number two, the slope is negative eight over seven, negative eight sevenths. And then lastly, for number three, the slope is one over six, one sixth. So there you have it. There's how to find slope from two points. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.